want to bring people's attention to that. You see the men's arms? I mean, he got the guns. He got the guns. He got. Why is this man not playing Joker? He got the guns. Anyway, yeah, let's get into this game one right here. He has the Greninja Ooh. stars. That's all that you need. <laughs> I mean, King Arx and Mega Man is. He's a very heart based Mega Man. You know, like there's that sort of old thing with fighting games where, you know, you're a heart or a mind or a body based player. Yes. King Arx feels, feels, just feels super hard. He just goes for things sometimes. He just calls out what his opponents are going to do and sometimes goes off stage way too deep. I'm uh, going to be honest. I'm, I, what, that was a nice... I really like that idea. I'm, I'm, not used to, I'm not used to the heart, brain, and mind player aspect of things that we've been recently seeing on, on Twitter and stuff like that. But yeah, yeah. He's, defi he's definitely a heart based player. Yeah. I... Oh, 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 I'll just mention that. Rishi, who we see here at Xeno, not infrequently, uh, made a really good video about it on YouTube, which you should really I, subscribe to Rishi's YouTube. It's so He's some of the best content creation around. Taking the first dog. Yeah, let's get back to this game, which Professor MGW seems to be doing a really good job with right now. He's I really at, like how he's kind of just contesting um, King Ark, because, like, as we know, King Ark is really good. But I really love the way how, like, um, MGW is kind of just showing, like, how he just kind of moves around on battlefield. And he's just like, you, you're not allowed to touch me. It's, and he's just going to, yeah. Unconventional movement. Like, look at the way he's, like, very peculiar. The, the angles he's going towards that it feels like King Ark is trying to occupy a space that Professor MGW just doesn't have to worry about being there. Is that? Oh, no. Can he get this ledge trap? be huge for him if he does, but if MGW manages to get out of the corner, which it looks like he was able to do, he could get a lot of damage. You know, Greninja is able to combo so well every hit into every hit. Okay. Ooh, okay. I, I, I definitely like the, the attempt with the Z drop there and taking the that stock same idea 143. as before. He got the I think last time it was a forward air off of a neutral get up. Yes. But the same concept applies where right now the at the ledge is where King Arc is being broken down. MGW it feels like he's able to really effectively lock King Arc in place and finish his stocks off in a way that King Arc hasn't really been able to respond in kind with yet. We'll see right here as he once again keeps him trapped at the ledge. Will he be able to do anything? No. Very MGW. nice patience. Yeah. I also like to point out um, MGW's um, usage of um, Metal Blade because whenever um, King Arc definitely does the just drop the Metal Blade, he's always right there to kind of just pick it up with dash attack and kind of just like use it. And especially like when it comes to like Z dropping and just making sure that he still has it. King Arc missing a few punishes here and there, but that sort of thing will really add up. Gets the up smash for some solid damage, but as it stands right now, there isn't much Mega Man can do to take a stock outright. I think maybe ooh, up tilt in the right situation might do it, but this game is looking tougher and tougher for King Arc as Professor MGW seems to be more and more comfortable just moving around and playing around every one of these projectiles, every single one of these zoning options that King Arc is even attempting to go for. Very nice. Um, I wasn't expecting him to pick it up there, but I think he caught it. Um, picked it up, picked it up with a down tilt, but definitely going to be that stock. Right. It's definitely looking like MGW is starting to make his recovery options a lot more um, predictable in a sense. Because whenever you, I'm, I don't want to compare him to Venya, but um, very nice taking that first game off of um, King Arc. Very nice, very nice. Um, but it, it kind of shows how um, his recovery is kind of just exploitable if he kind of just keeps on recovering like that back onto stage. I kind of like to see better um, recovery angles coming in from him. I mean, the one thing I'll say is that if he recovers on stage, for the most part, he's not really dying for it. If he recovers poorly off stage, like goes low, Mega Man can just kill him. It is a little bit of probably risk reward where there's you know, it's less likely that he's going to get caught if he goes for, like, a low recovery with some precise angle to the ledge. 
but if he does get caught, he's just going to die outright. That's true. I mean, for the most part, like, King Arc is starting to punish them, but mainly they're on stage punishes, where he'll go for, like, an up smash or something. And all that really does is it puts MPW in a juggle. Very situation. nice tag. Oh, and this, oh my god, this game, too, looking like in a completely different narrative, as King Arc has yet to be touched once by MTW, where it's already dished out 103%. And Mega Man, like, there's a point where you reach a percent threshold where all of a sudden it feels like everything Mega Man has just kills. Definitely didn't see a lot of the patience that we saw there. Thank you. So kind. Um. Oh, oh my yeah. god, he, I don't know if he anticipated that footstool, I think he probably did. Getting that, get, uh, so much damage off of the Leaf Blade, and now he is beyond a lapse at MGW in percent. He's only taken 27 this entire game so far, and MGW physically reeling back in his seat. Ooh, nice trump. That's an option that we don't see a lot of people go for these days, but... Can't phantom footstool projectiles, right? No. It, was, it, it looked <laughs> like he, it looked like he uh, phantom oh, footstool. Oh, wow. Wow, the weave. And you look at MGW's face, this game is, is gone. But he won game one, which means he has game three to work with. Not only that, but he's going to have game three on his stage counter pick. And Greenwich is the kind of character where you're forced to, like, I think FD is widely regarded to be his best stage. So you're forced to ban that sort of mm -hmm. thing. Uh, but a flatter stage might work really better for him. And as, oh. Yeah, King Rook is just kind of putting him through the works at the very end of this game, too. Wanting to go very low down there, but nice recovery from um, King Art. Seeing that he's kind of um, getting uh, hungry for the kill. Which is making it very even harder for him to take off his first stop. MGW, it seems like he really just wants to take the, the <laughs> single stock at least. He doesn't want to get three stocked in game two. And nice. there he finally does it. Now, he's not the sort of person who's just going to give up. He's not going to be like, I took the stock down and off stage. No, he is still in this fighting. But it's going to be pretty tricky for him. I think that mainly what you might be looking for is data here. You know, try and figure out, or at the very least, condition your opponent into some false habits of yours. So sorry. I'll put that on me. Anyways. Thinking about his counterpick, we did see FD and that Town and City band, so probably Kalos. Yep, we're gonna have Kalos. And this stage is gonna be good for Greninja, but it might also benefit uh, uh, Mega, Mega Man, Man a little. Just because of like, the wall jumps, firstly. That too. He can wall jump, but also, what were you gonna say about this stage for Mega Man? Um, just because it's definitely an even bigger stage, I'm so sorry. So, like, as compared to Battlefield, like, there's. N one, not no walls, and two, there's three platforms, but now you have like walls, and then you have platforms on the side, so it's kind of just like, you know, not not too much room for people dying on this stage, if I'm gonna be honest. But I guess it looks like he's probably wanting to use this a little bit more for um, edge guarding, or ed yeah, edge guarding, just to make it um, a little bit more linear, I'd say, other than like kind of recovering low. Yeah, he also has the option to stall on the ledge because he can cling to it. He can cling to the wall. Which Even, that's, is that's a little bit risky, it. but in the right situation, it might be really helpful because it can bait uh, King Oak into committing to like a down air or something like that. Oh, 
that's that leaf shield ends up doing so much damage. I definitely like to see a little bit more usage of the hydro pump when um King Arc is definitely above the ledge. Just to kind of like um stop him from really going for like air dodges and just kind of push him on, I mean push him off further and kind of like make him think a little bit better about what he's gonna do if he is recovering high. Yeah, MGW committing a lot to these uh, high recoveries. Ooh. King Arc has sort of been anticipating the low one, but so far MGW has just not really done it in a long, long time. As things stand at the moment, it's about even here. But with, with uh, MGW trapped at the ledge, he's the one who's really at risk of dying. Stage positioning matters so much, not just because, you know, normal stage positioning matters, but because both these characters like to kill off the side, and it's going to really make a difference. Getting hit by Mega Man back air from, you know, slightly off ledge as opposed to being, you know, completely at the ledge. Oh, that mm. Trying to read something there, but not getting it exactly. Very okay. close to dying. Oh, wow, Ooh. that air dodge. So clutch. I don't think that he has any guaranteed kill right here. Up throw, maybe we'll do it. Go for the throw. throw. He was DIing for the up throw, I think. Mo definitely. Um, I'm kind of. Wait, wait, huh? No, I think actually, don't you DI up throw and forward throw the same? Oh, uh, no. Am I wrong? Did they change that in this game? You used to have to DI up throw behind the ninja. I know. You still yeah. do. So, yeah, if he's facing the ledge, you would just DI towards the stage mm -hmm. for both up throw and forward throw. That's going to be dead. But having um, 53%, I mean, 55, 62, I guess. I don't know. My number's pretty well. But I definitely like this um, small lead that um, MGW has. And if you can kind of just, like, um, make it more doable with what percent he's at, it could definitely spell a good game for him. Oh, look at the neutral going on between these two. Oh, just kind of jumping just, around. Yeah, they were both understanding completely the range and effective, you know, punish potential that the other player had, and they were just playing around it beautifully. And so this game has sort of become a war of attrition for the most part, but a really good grab from... <gasps> Very Ooh. nice stall right there. You notice how he threw out that, uh, the metal blade at that particular angle to catch MTW. I'm wondering if maybe King Arc is start, start, starting to finally figure out those peculiar movement habits from MGW. I definitely like the way that oh, um, MG... Dark. Almost, almost. I definitely like the um, weight. <gasps> Very nice tag. Oh, oh my god. Oh, wait, oh. Oh. I mean, I guess. Is that going to be out there? Be it. Oh, no, he not yet. Kalos coming into play here with its uh, blast zones being so stupid. <laughs> Ooh, oh, oh my. That could have been it, but instead... I it definitely love the patient, more of the patience that he was having from that first game. Oh, Aww. he just throws out the... I like that. He recognizing that uh, M uh, MCW was just dashing back and forth. Grabbing no, just not, time. That's not, not going to kill. No. Yeah, without any rage. King Arc continues to live, continues to thrive. How much extra credit can he actually manage to do here? Mega Man with a stock lead has a lot of potential, but... Killed from Nair. <laughs> I definitely kind of like the respect that both of these players are giving each other when it comes to neutral. Like, you see, you're, you're, you're getting hit on shield by fair, so you kind of just, like, kind of um, remove yourselves from the situation. But the same kind of from um, MGW, where he sees that um, King Arc is going to throw down a... Um, uh, metal Blade and kind of just like waits it out sometimes and just like kind of sees what he's gonna go for and just kind of punishes afterwards All right, once again, this game is so even wow the up smash out of shield just doing a really good job of punishing right there Now we're still this is like an awkward percent range for them because they're kind of going back and forth just getting hit for hit for hit 
neither one of them really threaten the kill right now, but a little bit of stage positioning can go a long way. As we're seeing right now, King Ark managing to get all of this damage. Finally, a turnaround from MGW. No, he actually gets that forward smash parried. Definitely getting a little bit antsy here, MGW. Seeing that he I, it looked like he did mess up a few times. And there's that. Ooh, nice. That yet. tech was so important, though. But only 76% on King Arc and 126 nice. on MGW. But that Shadow Sneak is actually huge. We're starting to see King Arc get to a range where I, I don't know when exactly Dash Ooh. Attack will kill. Oh, God. Jump. Just enough. Back air gonna do it. Sealing the deal. And King Arc is gonna be victorious moving on in the winner's bracket. That was definitely really close coming in from MGW. He definitely could have had that game, but I feel like at the end there, you kind of definitely saw that he was getting a little bit antsy and kind of just like, kind of not, I guess, annoyed at his mistakes because he definitely looked like he didn't miss input a few times there.